My name is Mark Cheshire. I'm COO at 3Scale. And normally I'm the, the technical point of contact for everybody that works with 3Scale to put in place an API infrastructure for their APIs. So this is actually very different from my normal role. Uh, normally I'm really t tied down in the nitty gritty d details of Nginx proxy gateways and stuff like that. And so this is a chance for me to lift my heads above and see the forest for all, the, all of the trees. So um, one thing I'd like to do is uh, talk to you about the different ways of putting together business models for APIs. And one of the things that I'm trying to bring to the table here is the experience we have of working, it's hundreds of customers that we've helped uh, enable their APIs, make sure that the APIs can be opened up and be successful at uh, getting fast adoption amongst the developer community. And so I'll aim to share with you some of what our customers have gone through in order to put together successful business models. I'd like to start, though, um, by talking about a few things. One is to talk about why it's so important to take action now, because things are moving so quickly. Once you understand the need to move quickly and take action now, I'll dive into the business models in a bit more detail, and then I'll talk about how to execute on the strategies for that business model. To start with, um, there's a famous quote. I'd like to see if anybody knows the, the author of the quote. Uh, the quote is, software is eating the business, is eating the world. Who knows that? Software is eating the world. At the back? Anyone know? There was a hand up, but it's Mark Andreessen. Software is eating the world. A quote that was made in 2011. Uh, Mark Andreessen, one of the most successful in, uh, investors in uh, the world of the internet. And Mark made this quote to illustrate just how every industry was systematically being reinvented by software. All of the old models were being torn down and reinvented, whether it's automobiles, where you have a Tesla, where most of the electronics and control of the vehicle systems is all totally software controlled, from, uh, from selling books, from uh, healthcare, everything is being changed from top to bottom through the use of software. And that trend has only just begun, and it's accelerating day by day. There's another quote building on this, which is perhaps less famous, but equally applicable, particularly to this audience. And so this is the founder of 3Scale, that it isn't just software is eating the world, but it's that APIs are eating software. APIs give the, give the leverage potential. Software on its own is great, but if you have software in its isolated uh, islands, you're not taking the full advantage of the connectivity on the internet. And that's where APIs bring value. So this is what it used to look like uh, in the days in the 90s, that you had monolithic software applications. They'd be running in an on-premise data center. You'd control everything. But those applications were just running on their own, and it would often be a, a human that would actually be inputting data and getting the results out. There was a tremendous step forward in the time of the uh, client-server applications when people saw the value of connecting applications, so you had point-to-point -point integrations, which immediately made the IT systems a lot more valuable in companies and allowed companies to establish their first connections through uh, electronic data interchange, for example, to, to enable e-commerce. The things now, uh, since the, the turn of the last decade, is that the in interconnectivity is taken to a new level and it's now that you have complete ecosystems that can be interconnected, and the ecosystems build on top of each other. So you have something like uh, Flipboard, which builds on top of APIs from Twitter, and uh, Twitter builds on top of APIs from other uh, tools, such as uh, a, a camera application from your phone that uploads a photo to, it, to Twitter. All of these ecosystems are interplaying, and the end result is a lot more power and a lot more value to all of us in the room here. 
So that's uh, just at a high level about what's changing in the, the big strategic trends and the importance of APIs related to software in the world. Now to have a look at what this means for APIs. Back in 2005, when a APIs were first just becoming a phenomenon, uh, on, on the web that is, there was uh, a fairly straightforward approach on how to set up a business model. So this was uh, from Programmable Web, and uh, Programmable Web was the first uh, independent company that started out with an objective of tracking out what's going on in the world of APIs. They were the first uh, public group to actually see the potential for APIs. In 2005, they, they saw this as the different ways in which you could re realize value or create a revenue model from your API. So it's very simple. Uh, it's either free or the developer gets paid or you pay the developer or it's some kind of internal use. Simple, it couldn't get simpler than that. But it didn't stay that way. Things got more and more complicated as APIs evolved. And so this we, it went forward to 2011 and so uh, there are a lot more variants on how uh, the developer gets paid, and there was a lot more uh, innovation around the internal use cases. And this wasn't the end of it. Things got more complicated. So in the, just the space of two more years, John Musser gave this latest updated version. So this was from February earlier this year at the Appistrat event uh, in New York. And here, you see most of the new innovation is happening on the right-hand side, all around internal use cases. That, that ties a lot with what people uh, see, that about nine out of every 10 transactions are actually internal private APIs. So that's where a lot of the value is being taken advantage of. Um, but that's just a relative measure. The, the important thing is that the growth is happening everywhere. The next thing is to have a look in terms of the rate of change. Um, how many APIs would you say that there were back in 2006? Any guesses? There were 100 APIs in 2006. Today, just six years on, we have 10,000 APIs. The number of APIs is doubling every year, and that rate of growth has been consistent all the way from 2006, and it for sure is not slowing down this year. If anything, it's continuing to accelerate that growth. Furthermore, we see that these APIs, the APIs that programmable web are tra tracking, are really just the tip of the iceberg. They account for the public APIs, which are registered in the uh, directory that Programmable Web makes available publicly. But in addition to that, there are a huge number, and the estimates are between five and 10 times, are uh, APIs that are used either with private partners to build out a business ecosystem, or they're internal APIs. One example would be Daily Telegraph, a customer of 3Scale, and they have an API, and the sole purpose of their API is in order to be able to uh, run a mobile application to view the newspaper on a mobile phone or, or an iPad device. So that's an example of an internal API. The estimates continuing at this rate of doubling growth every year will see us in 2017 with one million APIs in the world. Soon there'll be more traffic, internet traffic, running due to APIs than websites. So there's a lot of change happening, and the right time to act is now to put in place an API initiative for your company. So how do you go about that? Well, there are a number of options for catalyzing an API-powered business model. One option, make, make the API is your product. So there are a lot of companies recently that have been created, and the way in which they go to market is with an API. The API is basically the storefront for the business. The second option is that there are a number of strategic initiatives. I'll talk about five strategic initiatives, and these are often catalysts in order to put in place an API program. 
And lastly, I'll talk about an approach to get you thinking about how to drive your API program by focusing on the core competencies of the business. First of all, for API as the product, this is no doubt the simplest way to put in place an API program. Um, there's, there's not a lot of investigation. This is a completely new business model. Uh, five years ago, th there weren't any business models that were pure API. Twitter may be the only example of a co company that had a pure business model that was driven by the API. The important thing nowadays, it's, it's no good for anybody to say, oh, I'm going to turn my, my business into an API. The important thing now is that if you want to create a product around an API is that you have to find a niche, but a niche where you can be a world leader. Those are the types of businesses where this approach makes sense. And you want to find something where you can reuse the data, same data in multiple different contexts. And I'll give some examples of what that is like on, on the next page. When it comes to pricing models, the key thing here is to keep pricing models really simple. Uh, just a simple tiered plan. Usually start with freemium because you want to encourage people to uh, adopt and play around, uh, use the API. And you can see a lot of great examples of how to drill into pricing an API in the revenue modules, models from programmable web. And the last thing is that it's important when the API is your product that you re realize that the developer portal is actually your, your storefront. And so you want to give as much care and attention to describing your API to the documentation you provide to make adoption as easy as possible. It's exactly the same as if you have a, a website for a high profile newspaper. You, you put a, a huge amount of it, care and attention to the design of the newspaper front page. That's the same amount of care and attention that you want to put into the front page of an API-driven business. Here are some examples. So the first one, uh, Flight Stats. Uh, flight Stats is the global leader in flight traffic information. They basically own all of the flight data that you can imagine in the world. One of the really cool things about their business model is that they do such a good job of analyzing the data and making it available to other people through an API, that they didn't actually create the data themselves. They go to an airline and they sign a contract, say, uh, give us your data, and normally they have to pay for that. But then they go back to that same airline and they say, we're going to sell you the data that you just gave us, but we're going to charge you a markup of several hundred percent because of all the cool work we've done for you. So that's a wonderful business where you get people to give you the raw ingredients and you give the same data back to them with a markup. Amazing business. The next one is domain name search. This is an example of a very cool little niche. Uh, a company there behind most of the uh, domain uh, name registrars like uh, GoDaddy. Uh, whenever you search for a domain name and you're looking for something that really would be a great match for your next new business idea, then uh, the main spot provides ideas for different name combinations that may be useful. All of this is available in API, so an example of a niche which, in which they're a global leader. And then the last one, full contact. Full contact provide contact information, so um, whenever you want to uh, for example, drive any kind of CRM system or any kind of email marketing initiative, you can use Full Contacts API to get uh, extended contact information, starting with an email address, and find out everything about that person that's publicly available. Uh, as, as an experiment, you may want to type in, go to their website, type in your email address, and I think you'll be surprised how much information they know about you. You can even go, go, I recommend you, sometimes it's a good idea to go and correct the data. They do get it wrong as well. So this is API as a product. Now, it's not enough though. Um, there's less than a quarter of business models rely on API as a product uh, as, as, as the approach of, of running their business. And the majority, more than three quarters, 
actually have non uh, uh, non API business models or uh, they're, they're powered in a different way rather than API as a product. And so it's important to think about what the difference is. When you have API as a product, you start with uh, the API and you think, what's the right business model for my API? But it's different when you want to uh, do the other types of approach to creating a business model. You need to start first with your business model and figure out what is that right API for my business model. So you're flipping the question on its head. And once you do that, it opens up these two other approaches. So one approach is to think about the strategic initiatives. We've identified five strategic initiatives that are driving a lot of uh, under, uh, what are the underlying drivers for a lot of API projects. There's uh, three scale recently, uh, about a month ago, released an ebook on this topic. So uh, at, the, at the end, there's a resources list. You're welcome to find that ebook and read a lot more about these. But basically, there's uh, mobile enablement. I think that one's quite clear to all of you with uh, cell phones, and uh, as Andres was talking about, uh, the fact that uh, any application that connects from your phone uses an API. So that's pretty clear mobile enablement. And that's a gigantic driver for API use today. The second one is uh, on, on uh, building out ecosystems. So using ecosystems to be able to drive growth for your business. Digital distribution channels. Uh, especially popular with uh, media businesses, but also e-commerce. So, uh, for example, Adidas provides uh, electronic commerce catalogs, and every retailer that stocks Adidas products gets product information, photo information, directly from Adidas's API in order to include in their uh, electronic storefronts, wherever they may be. Um, Powering new business models, that's very much along the lines of API as a product. So a lot of the new business models are API as a product. And finally, driving internal efficiency and innovation. Just two examples of these. So one is uh, coming back to Andreas that talked a bit about the uh, Amazon. Uh, Amazon is an amazing example of building a complete ecosystem. So um, you have Amazon on the one hand, uh, driving the uh, Amazon website, and you have the website variant, you have the mobile application variant of the website, then you have all of the Amazon affiliate program, That all of that is API driven. Um, there's the AWS, uh, uh, Jeff Bezos was famous for insisting that everything in Amazon had to be defined as an API, every service, should be defined with an open API. And they eat their own dog food. Uh, Amazon themselves use AWS and one of the, some of the earliest users of AWS. Two weeks ago, I was at uh, Amazon's AWS event, which has grown to 9,000 people now. And uh, just to, as a sign of the times, one of my favorite tweets from the event was that uh, it's a conference run by a bookseller that's disrupting the business of data centers. And one of the most popular keynotes was from a company uh, that was in the business of DVD rentals, which is now totally disrupting the movie industry. So that was AWS, Amazon, and Netflix. Just a sign of the times thinking of what these two companies have done. The other example around these strategic initiatives is uh, taking the example of internal efficiency. This is University of California, Berkeley, a uh, huge campus in the US with 50,000 students. They, they came from a position where they had very fragmented internal API development that was going on. But every team developed APIs in a different way. There was no consistency at all. So what they decided to do is to centralize the API infrastructure service and then everybody within the campus that wanted to create APIs, they had a consistent way. They knew exactly what the rules were. They were guaranteed high reliability, and they were guaranteed a strong security layer for, the, for their API. 
And it's a very straightforward, standardized format to publish an API and for developers to sus subscribe to an API. They're using that now to boost efficiency and boost innovation. More and more teams are creating APIs and getting the benefits of APIs, integrating systems on, on the university because of this approach. So that's two examples out of the five strategic initiatives. Now I'd like to look at the other approach, the third approach, which is using the API to support core competencies. And when it comes to core competencies, the, it, it's always the important is to take the starting point, to think very deeply about what it is that your business does. What is the core, what, what makes you unique, and what helps you add most value uniquely compared to any other people in the market. Now, that could be anything. It could be data. It could be how you process data. It could be, uh, if, in the media, it could be the visualization of that data. And so it's important to think very deeply about what that core asset is. And then the question becomes to think that uh, the API, it's really a channel. You have, you have this core asset, and the API for you is a channel in order to be able to take advantage of that core asset in as many places as possible. So let's apply this thinking to a, an example. Um, so you have this uh, tri triage, uh, and you have to think through, uh, what is the core asset? Is it data? Is it a presentation layer? Is it logic? And try, try to break things down that way. Once you're breaking it down, you need to figure out, OK, uh, I've, I've got this valuable core asset in this area. Now, how do I take advantage of that? Uh, I need to be able to find uh, other assets, whether if I've got a logic asset, I need to find somebody who can present that well for me, and I need somebody that maybe provide data to help me analyze. And then once you do that, you can develop a strategy based on the connections between the two. So one example of that, um, Twitter. This isn't Twitter today. This is Twitter, let's say, reverse the clock back to 2007. In 2007, one of the things that Twitter was trying to do as they were on, the, on their road to becoming ubiquitous, they realized they could never invest and create all of the mobile clients that they wanted. So they focused on their core asset, which was the tweets themselves and the data which were formed those tweets, those 140 characters and all the metadata. Today it's something like, uh, uh, something like two kilobytes of metadata for each of those 140 characters. And they said, everybody else, you're welcome to use our API and build clients on top of the Twitter API. And so people did that. One example is TweetDeck. And that the example, what the strategy they were trying to do was an enable a, a mobile strategy, driving uh, access to mobile clients for Twitter. And it was so successful for them that they decided to kill that business and take over the mobile clients themselves. So when, when, you, when you control the API, I think you, you, can be, uh, you can be brutal, as Twitter was in, in their approaches, or you can also be... Uh, a kind of uh, more of a gentleman type approach. And uh, at Threescale, actually, we, we encourage the latter approach to be more fair-minded. Um, last, last week, I believe it was, at a conference in the United States, DFRAG, we uh, announced an initiative called API Commons, which is basically to encourage the sharing of API designs, not to copyright APIs, but actually to put them into the public domain where they can be shared with proper attribution. OK, so this is uh, just a few examples uh, on, the, on this approach. So first of all, think through what is the core asset, then think through what is the complementary uh, assets, and uh, define the strategy to capture the value. So three examples here. Netflix, they're focused on the presentation layer. Uh, they use the API to drive support for 800 devices. Um, Twilio. They focus on the logic layer, processing SMS messages, and you'll hear from Ben Nooney uh, a bit later today, so he'll be able to share some more of, about their API strategy. And the last one, Music Match, uh, they're, they're an example 
of a company almost in the category API as a product, they own the rights to almost all of the lyrics for music in the world, and uh, they, they've got a, uh, a strategy to be able to drive uh, lyrics for whatever application you can imagine, whether it's a mobile app or a web app or so on. So we've seen some elements, three elements, to look at business models. Uh, now, the last few slides on API delivery. So you decided what the business model is. You now need to make sure that when you implement it, you do it and you execute on that strategy so it's going to be successful. So as part of that, you need to uh, make sure that you get the execution done right. There's going to be a lot of issues that come up, so be prepared for all the different types of issues, how to ensure access uh, controls to your API, uh, how do you monetize it, uh, is it something that you can do directly within the API, how will you do it, what is the user experience, so this comes back to thinking of the developer portal as a storefront, making sure that the developer UX is a great one. Can you scale up? Uh, often companies start with just a fairly low volume of API calls, but once you have an API published, it's, it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do is to try to deprecate an API. So when, when you make an API live, make sure you can support it for the long run and keep on growing it. So there's a bunch of things to think about as you're executing your API strategy. One way to structure the thoughts in order to be able to put in place uh, a good operational management approach for the API is to think about what are the building blocks you'll need of fe features and functionality. So you'll need to make sure you have uh, access control and security layer. You'll want to make sure that you have analytics to be able to drill down and view the usage of the API. Uh, how is it being used? By whom is it used? To identify your tier one partners, so you may want to set up a, a private one-on-one -on -one relationship with, with an account manager. Um, you'll, you'll want tools to, in order to be able to provide the best possible developer portal, and some of the best practices there I mean interactive uh, developer documentation so that you don't have to cut and paste example calls into the command line. You can execute an API call right there and see the results and experiment and try things out before you start writing a line of your application code. And finally, to be able to integrate billing and payments, so uh, to either do that with your own billing systems or uh, an external third-party billing system. So these are some of the considerations when you execute the strategy. Let me wrap up now. So the train is leaving. Get on it right now before it's left the station. Um, the three things on how to think about business models. Firstly, is it appropriate for you to have API as a product? If it's not, and it, uh, in most cases that will not be the right solution, uh, then think uh, about what, what, what are the two alternatives. So one is looking at the five different key strategic drivers that underline API projects and see if you have a match with one of those. Are they a match for, for your business strategies? And the second one is to think about your business, analyze the core competencies of your business, and then use that to figure out, are you delivering data, logic, or presentation? And then figure out how you can use the API to find complementary service providers and add more value. And finally, make sure that the execution's right. I'll stay on, I'm going to welcome any questions, otherwise I'll stay around later. Thank you.